Hello my friends and welcome! Just near to the Moscow, big kaboom happened today in the Sergiev Posad town. The kaboom itself was so powerful that it completely demolished the local factory. Indeed, it is the biggest one that we have witnessed in Russia. We have numerous of the videos, all of them I published on my Telegram channel and there you may see the results of this, I would say, kaboom. Officially, Russia said that it was the explosion of the firework storage, but some of the eyewitnesses spotted the artillery shells. So probably it was the place of production of the Russian army artillery shells. And also it was the place where Russia produced the sensitive and precise equipment, like the aiming tools for some of their military vehicles, plus the systems for the K-52 helicopters, plus some of the parts of the Lance and Drones electronics were produced over there as well. At least we got that information from the Russian channels. Some Russian media stated that it was the strike of the Ukrainian drone, but eyewitnesses said that they haven't heard anything, because when the drone flies usually you hear the sound. But I think that Ukraine might have used the other tactics to get rid of this factory. There were numerous of the sabotage acts performed in Russia by Russians themselves. The Ukrainian intelligence tries to find some of the unsecured individuals in Russia who would be happy to perform those specific tasks for the certain reward or for eliminating their own problems, for example, with bank debt. That is how the last months there were more than 15 fires inside the Russian military branches. Today everything repeated for Russia there was the huge fire of the ammunition storage in Stavropilia. My friends, before we go to the other news, let me tell you about the sponsor and also the partner of my channel. Yes, it is as usual the Atlas VPN. And they have the unique offer that was made especially for my followers, where you may get the Atlas VPN premium for just 170 per month plus 6 months for free. This is the outstanding deal for all of the premium VPNs existing. This is the outstanding deal from all of the premium VPNs and for me personally, the Atlas VPN is the best one out there. You may hear that I'm not the native English speaker. And what helps me to improve my English? Honestly, watching the live shows on Netflix. My favorite series to study is Friends, but it's not available in my country, but then I turn on the Atlas VPN well, it is now available for me. I also rent my current house with a great discount using Atlas VPN. For example, booking doesn't have the fixed price and it may vary depends on your country. So by changing your virtual location you may find the best price. Atlas VPN encrypts your data so it's out of reach by the government, annoying ads or hackers. And yes, believe me, your personal account may be vulnerable, especially when you use the public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN has the breach monitoring service that helps to prevent the hacking of your devices, so then I see the warning message I disconnect from the public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN helps me to access services and websites which are blocked in my country. I know why, but Patreon is one of them. And now my friends, please check out my personal link in the video description just below, where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium for just 170 per month plus 6 months for free. This is the fantastic opportunity for you to get the premium VPN service. So hurry up to join the club. Speaking about kabooms in Crimea, there was the one in Feodosia, actually locals heard two of the explosions, but continued to chill on the local beach. And also there was the big kaboom in the service dock or maintenance dock in Sevastopol. A single big loud kaboom was reported, but Russia says that all of that is just training. Well, what can I say, kind of interesting trainings they have. Alright, now let's go to the front lines update briefly today. Let's go to Kazache Lahiri, the new landing point of the Ukrainian army. Actually, now I know the position where our guys landed. It happened over here and our guys are controlling the part of this village. Moreover, the Ukrainian soldiers were able to imprison the Russian soldiers that came for the backup for the retreated Russian mobilized soldiers. The Ukrainian soldiers fought with them and were able to capture some. There was also the Russian major who was responsible for this territory. He went to attack, but I guess he was captured or went totally kaput because Russians say that they don't know where he is. Yes. As a proof we have the new photos of the imprisoned Russian soldiers, I cannot show all of them on this platform and we have to blur it. The attack was so quickly that one of the guys forgot his pants. 
They were delivered to the other shore to the Ukrainian controlled territory again using boats. And this is the other map we have. Here you can see the vector of the Ukrainian landing operation and partially we took Kazachi Lahiri. If you directly translate the name of the village into English it will sound like Kazakh camps. So if you heard this name Kazakh camps it's the same as Kazachi Lahiri. Russia also tried to send more reinforcements to that area even some BTRs like this one BTR 82. But you see that the Russian BTR got sick on its way. Before this landing operation Ukraine prepared the ground using the Vampire rocket artillery systems and it was really massive attack and Russian mobilized soldiers had to retreat from this area. After it our special forces landed in that area taking the place. They immediately organized the trap for the Russian reserves and Russia sent those reserves. So there was the battle in which Russia lost quite a lot of the infantry men and some were imprisoned as I said to you. Also according to the Russian military bloggers Ukraine was able to capture the cell phones of the Russian commanders and there Ukraine may have the access for the Russian positions in that particular place. What is the most interesting and I would say funny that Ukrainians called to other Russian soldiers using the personal cell phones of the captured soldiers asking them for the backup immediately. But but Russians haven't sent more forces to that area because the previous ones disappeared. So definitely there is the trap for the Russian soldiers. I would say that for now it's the tactical success of the Ukrainian army in Kazachi Lahiri, but this operation from tactical may involve into the strategic one if our guys will go and cut this E-58 road. In that case the supplement of the Russian group in Melitopol would be very hard. Speaking about the south front lines in the Parisia direction in Robotine, there are no any changes for today, our guys continue to stay near to Robotine border. As for Ura Jaina, our guys took the part of the village but stayed there for the last night. Hopefully this night they will continue to assault. Bakhmut area, no any changes for already one week. But we have the very concerning news coming from the Kupin's direction. Russia has prepared the large forces in this direction and they are fully ready to try to get control over the Kupinsk city. I don't believe that they could be successful over there but nevertheless Ukraine announced the evacuation of the nearby villages and the small towns. Just to make sure that our defenders would concentrate just on fighting against the enemy rather than performing some humanitarian tasks. For civilians obviously it's better to leave. Why I don't think that Russian army could be successful in this direction? First of all it's not the Wagner army. The Russian regular army is much less motivated. But however they have more resources. And for Russia I guess it's the last opportunity to perform the attack actions this year. Because soon it's going to be autumn and after it the winter time where the big tactical attacks are simply very risky or sometimes not possible at all. Their secondary goal is to deflect as many forces as possible of Ukrainian reserves from the other parts of the front lines. Well if Russia wants to go to Kupensk they also have to cross the natural obstacles, some of the rivers, lakes and obviously Ukrainian defense which is located in this urban area. There are four main areas that Ukraine is using as the defense hubs I would say. The biggest one is over here. The village Petropavlovka with the river that goes across it. Well if Russia is very serious about their attack if they accumulated more than 50,000 soldiers they might be stopped over here across this river. Well anyways they also may try to get Kupensk under control but it would be the second Bakhmut for them. They would lose their army over there as Wagner lost more than 25,000 soldiers in Bakhmut. Here I speak about the total caput plus wounded army personnel. How do I know about this planning operation from the Russian side? Well we have the open sources available from the Ukrainian officials. They already told about it. The Ukrainian general Sirsky announced this assault from the Russian army today and also the local officials announced the evacuation. So the news about this area 
are not good. This place is actually the last part of the Kharkiv area that Russia is controlling. It means that the main target for Russia is not to stop in Luhansk Oblast, Donetsk, Kherson and Zaporizhia. They want to take the Kharkiv Oblast and all of the territory of Ukraine. That is why no negotiations with them. Russia continued to lose their vehicles and tanks in Donetsk direction as well. This video was filmed near to Marinka. About the Russian big landing military ship that was attacked not long time ago, now there are some of the satellite images showing the ship in the huge dock. It means that Russia will try to fix this ship, but it will take years. Then I see this picture, I recall the maintenance of the only Russian air carrier. It also was put into the big dock and there were two of the huge fires that destroyed the most of the equipment of the Russian air carrier. So before the maintenance it was even better. Finally Russia decided not to continue maintenance on the air carrier to stop it for unlimited period. The similar stuff we expect over here. By the way this landing ship is kind of old. Plus it was severely damaged so I don't think if it's very efficient to restore this ship. About the Russian tanker SIG that was also attacked by Ukrainian drone boats. The British Defense Intelligence confirmed that this tanker was used for the Russian military purposes. So it makes this tanker the legitimate target of Ukrainian armed forces. Alright, about the Storm Shadow and Scalp cruise missiles. Those could only be launched from this airplane, the Suhoi Su-24 tactical bomber. Ukraine doesn't have lots of those airplanes and we also lost many. That is why every day our pilots fly from one airfield to another, making it difficult for the Russian surveillance to spot our planes. Also Ukraine deployed the air defense systems just in the military airfields like RST and NASAMS. So hopefully our airplanes are more or less secured. Germany transferred to Ukraine two of the Patriot launcher units, plus the other equipment that we definitely in need. Speaking about the vehicle losses for the last three days, Ukraine totally lost 13 of the vehicles, Russia lost 34. But what is the most interesting in this picture are the losses for artillery systems. Ukraine lost three of the artillery systems, Russia lost 13. It's incredible difference, it shows that Ukrainian FPV long-range drones are much more effective compared to the Russian Lancet drones. Also, it shows that our counter-artillery raiders are working great. That is why if they try to use their artillery systems, they immediately got spotted and our guys use the FPV drones or fire back using our artillery systems. The most losses Russia has in 152mm artillery systems and Ukraine lost 155mm Krab system. This graph over here shows the quantity of explosions in Russia for each year. You can see in 2022 there are many. And below we have the casualties. So since Russia started its war against Ukraine, they have the dramatic boom in the explosions on the territory of the Russian Federation. The President of the United Arab Emirates wants to organize the meeting between Zelensky and Putin. It could take place on 30 of November during the Conference of United Nations in Dubai. Well, what can I say? Some of the countries still do not understand what this war means for Ukrainian people and probably for Zelensky. This meeting is simply not possible. Now, it's not gonna happen and President Zelensky said about it openly, will not negotiate with Putin. Just today Russia attacked the territory of the local church in Zaporizhia. Many people lost their lives and were wounded, so why should we negotiate with that barbarian leader? I'm sure that after all Russia will be reformed. It should be definitely demilitarized as I see it. Alright, finally we have the deep state military map update and we have some of the movement near to Robotene. It is today and it was yesterday, so there is the movement from the Ukrainian side. It is awesome, so soon Ukraine will penetrate the Russian defense lines. I am sure about it. As for the coupons direction, there are no any changes, so for now it is good. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and also please check out the video description just below where you might find the link to the Atlas VPN Premium with a huge discount. This deal is valid just for my followers, so hurry up to join the club. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.